And welcome back to the Snowden Grove Park in South Haven, Mississippi. This is the 12U Perfect Game Invitational National Championship. Brett Dolan and Chris Allard and just got done with a thrilling 9U game, Chris. Now we get a chance to see the 12s go at it. Well, absolutely, and it was an exciting finish, I'll tell you. Uh, the way things ended up with TBT coming back, they played an outstanding game. They're the title winners this weekend. And, of course, uh, this 12U game should be a good one, a great matchup between two great clubs here. Introduce us to these two teams. Yeah, well, you've got the Braves Baseball Academy playing out of Southern California, the SBA Bolts 12U team. Braves Baseball Academy under the coach direction of Gus Rico. And, again, a great great team out of Southern California. And your club, Colin Thacker, with the SBA Bolts 12U national team. So two great clubs going after each other. This should be a phenomenal matchup this afternoon. Here's your batting lineup for the Braves. And, again, they will bat 10. They also have a DH for the second baseman who will not hit. So we'll introduce you to these players as we get underway. And this is the left-hander Grayson Bell on the mound to go up against Vincent Messick, the first batter. Yeah, Grayson Bell, lefty. He's got good command of the plate. He's got a good slider, fastball. This kid's got a myriad of pitches that he can run. And, again, he's certainly someone to contend with. We'll see how he gets going here in the beginning. He says the slider is his best pitch as he throws the strike. And he also adds he's usually pretty calm on the mound. That might be tested with a championship game, but we'll find out. Young man from Douglasville, Pennsylvania. Yeah, again, looking at him as a lefty, he's got good location. If he finds himself in command of this game, this could be very interesting on the pitching side for him and the SBA Bolts. Always well, intrigued by those pitchers who are pretty good athletes. This young man was a wrestler going through the sixth grade karate as a young kid. So a lot going on, and the pitch to Messick is a little bit outside. We've got six umpires for this game today. I mean, this is like a division series or world series game. We've got umpires down each line. Well, yeah, six-man crew. <laughs> it's a big crew. Behind the plate today, you've got Jeremy Mums. He is an outstanding umpire as it looks like SBA is going to get their first, unfortunately, guy on, the Braves, uh, as they put the first runner on. That's Messick. you got uh, first base, so you got T.J. Davis, another good umpire for P.J. Murray. Uh, Singefeld, he'll be on second base. Matt Calusa is over on third. Daniel Davis in left field. And then Landon DeStefano, he's out there in right field. So it's a big crew, but a crew necessary for a game like this. Jordan Leon, the third baseman, next man in. Braves get their leadoff runner aboard against the SBA Bolts for the 12 UPG Invitational National Championship just outside of Memphis here in Mississippi. It's a great complex. And that pitch way inside and low. So after the game, Chris, you've got to take down the short fence, leaving us the regular fence at 275. You've got to manipulate the mound, all part of the process going from 9U to 12U. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a transitional period. Number one, center field were 300 feet. We were 250 on the kids, 275 on the corners, so it was a little bit more distance. And, of course, 50-70 on the pitching mound. So, you know, you've got some variables that are going on here. Crew was able to turn this around. It looked for the longest time in game one like we were going to have the if game. So this game that was originally going to be about two. For a while it looked like, well, this might be 3.30, maybe a little bit later. Then all of a sudden it comes up to 115. So they've had to be flexible too. Yeah, there was some shuffling of the teams. I know that SBA was able to be located rather quickly. And I talked to Coach Rico, and uh, he got a phone call. They thought, <laughs> you know, that play that we saw to finish on the walk-off, Rico's watching it thinking, okay, they're going to go in an extra game. These guys are rolling out of bed. West Coast kids got to get their sleep, I guess. That's another walk, so back-to-back -back free bases. And it took until the fourth inning in our first game to get some runs. Pitching certainly dominated early. There weren't a lot of hard-hit balls, but all of a sudden a couple of free base runners to begin this game. Well, absolutely, and uh, just definitely showing the difference of what's happening. I think, you know, you're, you're talking a variable on pitching velo, you know, command control, et cetera, and uh, I think right now we're just seeing a settling in on the pitching side. But, yeah, two runners on in scoring position. This is Lewis Lappy, the first baseman. That ball hit in the air down the line in right, and the play is made. So Lappy flies out to Cunning, but our lead runner, Messick, will advance to third base. Yeah, well hit ball deep to the right side. There was a long route, so the runners had an opportunity, but uh, still well hit ball, good barrel there, but uh, too much of a deep high fly, and of course these guys are backing up. The defense is ranged up. They're deep. This is McGraw Van Wormer. He is the DH in the cleanup hitter from Prescott, Arizona. Goes to Mile High Middle School, 7th grade. 
And takes a strike over the inside corner. Yeah, good looking pitch there. Running on the inner half, fastball. Across father Mark, mom is McKenzie, but dad was drafted right out of high school to play for the Diamondbacks. He was in their very first draft class. That's a wave and a miss. Yeah, this kid, he's quick. He's got a good bat. If he finds a pitch, they've got an opportunity to strike here early. Runners at the corners, one down. Long, lean, and lanky left-hander. He really works into those right-handers. I think it might be just part of his natural movement, but has kept these right-handers a little bit nimble in the batter's box. Well, he comes inside, and he's got a quick arm, quick release, and uh, it, you know, you've got to be on it, especially when you're looking at that inside pitch. Got a couple of players just playing catch outside the dugout in case maybe this first inning becomes problematic. That's a wave and a miss. Throw down is not in time, so Leon will get the stolen base. Messick held it third, but there's now two outs in the inning. Yeah, you never know what's happening on the hill. I mean, again, it, it, you're on a short leash here, especially in a situation where you've got a double final. Uh, I think that SBA would like to try to get this done in one, and the Braves baseball on the other side, obviously with runners in scoring position, like to get an opportunity in a pass ball or hit by pitch. Oh, hit by pitch. I thought maybe that was going to get by... Mier, but it plunked him, so now the bases are loaded without a hit and two outs in the top of the first. Yeah, you can see the pitch here. It comes inside. Again, he's throwing a lot of balls on the inner half. Oh, and, sure is. You know, you're, you're, you're rolling dice a little bit if, if you don't have a good release point and good control of that pitch as it came inside there and put the man on. This is Wyatt Gordon, San the Diego right fielder. Kid. <laughs> California kid. Sure yeah. is. You almost wonder with Grayson Bell if he might be a little more inclined to slide towards that first base side of the rubber considering the amount of movement he's getting into the right-handers. Now, if you get it on the hands, it's one thing. If you end up hitting guys, not so good. That time he works the outside corner. A chopper to third, speedy runner, but the play is made. Woodley retires Gordon, so a lot of traffic, but no damage. Yeah, absolutely. Opportunities they're not able to capitalize and convert, but they're able to get out of the inning. We'll come back for the bottom of the first from South Haven. No score. Got the Braves and the Bolts from South Haven, Mississippi in our 12U PG Invitational National Championship. Bolts were able to navigate some trouble in the top of the first. Braves baseball did not score. They ended up leaving the bases loaded. We'll take a look at the lineup for the Bolts. And again, they're going to bat 10 with Bryant, Pedinato, and Lawrence just the top three. Curious to see. We might have a few more well-hit balls in this game than we did in the first, which, again, for a while was really dominated by the pitchers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've got some power hitters here, and we'll see them coming up and opportunities for both sides. You've got Ruiz on the hill for the Braves. I like what he does. He's got good stuff again, good command of the plate. We'll see how he does as he settles into his campaign. Young men from Simi Valley, California, would like to pitch at USC. Part of a winning PG Houston Super NIT squad. And the son of Rudy and Stephanie, three younger siblings, busy household. And this is Maddox Bryant, the second baseman, to begin things. And he looks at strike one. Always a good thing to try to work ahead here.
And Bryant takes another strike. Good pitch. Had a chance to talk to Gus Rico, the head coach of the Baseball Academy. Got started in 2010. He's based out of Van Nuys, California. And he told me he said they currently have a Braves alumni in the MLB, Hunter Green, who plays for the Reds. Oh, boy, do they ever. Maddox out of Kingwood, Texas, in my neck of the woods, northern Houston area. Says he's constantly working to improve daily down to the count here. One and two, and that one came way in. Yeah, Hunter Green, a PGE alum. Still remember him at the All-American Classic several years ago in San Diego, throwing 100 miles an hour from the mound and just barreling up baseballs with his bat. Yeah, amazing. Quite an athlete, an accomplishment for him, and a highlight for the Braves Baseball Academy. Pretty good battle right out of the gates with Maddox Bryant. He's going to wave and miss. Good job by Ruiz to get Brian to go fishing and get the K to begin the game. Yeah, Ruiz looks good. He's moving the ball around, good command, isolating his pitches, and a good sequence there for him as they get the K. You can see the pitch just whiffed on the outside part of the plate. Colton Pedinato from North Carolina. Next man in. He is the catcher, long and lean catcher, who takes one inside for a ball. Part of a team that won the PG World Series in back-to-back -back years, so he's already established himself as somebody who's used to playing in big games like this. And I think that's a key factor, too. You talk about that. You know, some of these kids come in with a lot of high-level experience in some of the major events around the country, and uh, certainly in this case an advantage to be in that position. Also the PG Select Fest MVP last year for the 11U game that I had a chance to broadcast from East Cobb in Georgia. Outside of Atlanta, 2-0 pitch, fouled back and out of play. Good cut. It's a little late there. Ruiz had a strikeout to begin the contest. Two balls and a strike to Pettinato. Another big hack and another foul ball out of play. Ruiz has kind of been running the outer half of the plate. I think he could come inside here. Next pitch gets the wave of the miss. Pedinato over the top of that one. The strikeout will have to be completed with the throw to first. Two gone. Good alert in the box, though. Drop three strike. A lot of players sometimes hesitate. They don't think about that. That's critical, obviously, in a drop three situation. You can see Ruiz here locating. Well, that pitch had some drop, didn't it? Sure did. It fell out quickly. Trey Lawrence here. Another one of our Select Fest kids from a year ago. The top 11 new players in the country. Trey's out of Somerville. He said the most important moment. That one is grounded to second base right to Theard, and he is going to throw out Trey Lawrence. So that was a well-done inning by Ruiz. Couple of strikeouts, soft ground out, able to navigate a perfect first inning. Off and rolling, we head to the second in the 12U Invitational National Championship.
On we go to the second in the 12U game, the Braves Baseball Academy, the SBA Bolts. We've got California against Carolina in that first game. Chris, we had Florida and California, so these teams have sort of met in the middle just outside of Memphis for this big event. Yeah, first of all, this is a great location, perfect game, doing what they do best and bringing things in here to the Snowden Grove Park for the PGI National Invitational. I mean, what a location. You can't beat it. you got natural grass out in the outfield, turf fields, a beautiful location. And, yeah, when you're looking from coast to coast, you got players from all around the country converging on these destinations. Wrapping up on Monday with this championship game, this is Braden Halverson, Northridge, California native, the left fielder who's going to lead off this inning. He'd love to play someday at Michigan, maybe UCLA. And the first one is outside from Grayson Bell. Yeah, the Braves here are looking at seven, eight, nine hitters with Halverson in the seven spot, trying to get something started here. Opportunity at the last at bat, but they weren't able to convert it. Pitch to Halverson is outside and low. He's a big Padres fan, Manny Machado fan, because he hits dingers. <coughs> Says Halverson. Yeah, he's looking at some great players, most definitely. And the 2-0. Up the middle, softly hit, but in a good spot. Can Bryan get there, but not near in time? You couldn't have rolled that out there much better than Halverson hit it for the infield single. Yeah, soft contact, but uh, ranged up was too deep on the second base side. Good speed down the line. And Kai Galong will be the next man in. He is the center fielder for Braves out of Long Beach. Goes to Blue Ridge Academy. He'd like to go to Stanford someday. Father Britton, Mother Elisa. Left on left matchup here in the second inning. Way outside. It. That one kind of ate up Pedinado and a wild pitch provides a free base. Yeah, I believe they're thinking here this time they've got to convert it. They had runners at, what, second and third the last inning and not able to bring one across. This is a long pause from Grayson Bell, and time was called. You can tell this team is from California. Halverson had a mom who was a water polo player. Galong, his father, Britton, was the starting setter for the UCSB volleyball team. He was a gaucho, so you're getting some different sports than we have down here in the South. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the South, it's football, basketball, baseball. We don't do a lot of water polo. The West Coast, it's swimming, water polo, <laughs> tennis, indoor volleyball, outdoor volleyball, and I can speak from experience in that. Uh, myself playing the game for many years. Volleyball is a great sport in Santa Barbara, and the Gauchos always had a good team. It's not a bad place to be. No, it's be in Santa Barbara. Certainly a great campus uh, and an excellent sports program. Yeah, you get on the West Coast, you're going to see a lot more water lifestyle related That's activities. True. The only water in the South is when the football players go in the rehab pool to do <laughs> <laughs> some work. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Galong, and the Braves trying to provide the game's first run. That's well placed right on the outside corner from Grayson Bell. Yeah, good location in the outer half there. Long look in for the sign from Bell, working with Pedinato as catcher. And the pitch on the way is poked but fouled down the line and left. Yeah, a little late on that pitch there, but again, making contact. Infield single, a wild pitch, put Halverson at second base. The shortstop, Duncan, keeping an eye on him. Big bender just kind of drifted off the plate. Yeah, a little up in the zone as well. Yeah, good speed on the bags. You're going to play him close on the defensive side. Shortstop in the back pocket, as you said. Big pitch here. Doesn't want to see a couple of guys reach, but he will. That's ball four. So last inning, there were three runners on base without the benefit of a hit, but nobody scored. First two reach here in the second. Yeah, hoping they're able to convert it here. They need it. It's absolute. It's do or die for them either way. You get the win, you move on. The SBA trying to do this in one. We talked about 
Wyatt Ruiz, when he was on the mound, threw a perfect first inning. Here he is in the box, taking a long look over to his coach. Maybe a, a possible bunting situation here as we get to the bottom of the lineup here in the top of the second. First baseman up a little bit on the grass. Third baseman even with the bag. He is indeed showing bunt, kind of stabbed at it a bit and bunts it foul. Probably a case where if he's committed to that, he wants to get that bat out in front of him. I know the pitch wasn't ideal to try and deaden. Yeah, it looked like a push bunt, too, like he was on the move coming up the line there on the first base side. Well, he's got the attention of the first baseman, Wyndham. He's creeping in well in front of the bag at first. Next pitch, not showing bunt here. Roller into the hole, almost in no man's land, and safe at first. Two infield singles this inning, Chris, just absolutely to the perfect spot where there really wasn't a play. Yeah, the shortstop had to go a long way. I mean, that, that's to his right. He's off balance a little bit. It's a long throw. I mean, Duncan made a good effort, but Abel just not. He it, it was too deep in the hole. So back to the top of the lineup. I beg your pardon. This is Evan Thompson. So remember, we're batting 10, and Thompson will hit here. Thompson coming in as the extra hitter here in the 10 spot. So another lefty-lefty matchup. Thompson out of Gilbert, Arizona in the Phoenix area. Goes to Elite Performance Academy in Chandler in the seventh grade. Bell could use some outs. Tap foul right at the plate. Evan Thompson, a big Anthony Rizzo and Chicago Cubs fan living there in Arizona. Said Rizzo's always smiling and having fun, and that he is. And a fine player, no <laughs> question about that. Thompson will be smiling if he can deliver the game's first RBIs, and he's going to wave and miss. That was a big pitch from Bell. He went upstairs, got Thompson to climb the ladder, and that's a huge first out this inning. Yeah, high fastball. That'll get him. He chased it. Interesting on the lefty-lefty matchup, you know, if he's running inside on the right-handed hitters, then he would try to run outside a little bit, but he kept the ball pretty much inside the plate. Well done, well executed, good pitch sequence there for Bell. Bolts have been having a couple of guys throwing outside their dugout. There really isn't a bullpen area here in foul territory, but maybe just in case they wanted to make an early potential pitching change. And I think that may be exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I think that's happening here. And uh, I believe that's Ingram coming in for SBA, where's number 10 for the club. Oliver Ingram. Yeah, Ingram's got some good command of the plate, good velo. He's got a mixture of pitches he can move around. And I think, as you said, it's a strategic play here. And as we talked about earlier, you know, you get to this point in the tournament, you've got only a handful of arms left. FBA should be in a little better shape because they went through the winner's bracket. And they probably are doing so just relative to what's happening in the situation right now. Ingram says his self-scattering report, his strength as a pitcher is getting batters to chase at the movement of his pitches. So with a big strikeout, bases loaded, one gone, I know he'd love to find a way to kind of walk the tightrope and get out of this inning to keep Braves from... Scoring first in a must-win game for them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the opportunity's there for the Braves, whether they can capitalize on it. They had a shot at it the last at bat and stranded a few, but here's an opportunity again. So we'll see how it plays out. I like Ingram, though. This kid's a cool customer. He can get up on the hill and do his business and take care of things for his club. Well, he says his nickname's Big Sexy, so you know he's got a personality already. Absolutely. When Anybody's... a 12-year-old goes by that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Roanoke, Virginia. His dad, Andy, was a baseball and hockey player at Roanoke College. His grandfather, and I find this fascinating, his grandfather was the tailback at Virginia Tech, but he was also a member of the famous Edison High School team that Remember the Titans, that movie was based yes, on. Yes, indeed. There's a little bit of history there in the family. Oh, that's a good one. Might be worth sitting down a couple of times a year just to pop that in the old DVR if there's such a thing, or the VCR, or whatever, the DVD. If Whatever you're using. One. Yeah, if there's still one buried in your garage or up high in your closet somewhere, right? Well, Vincent Messick will bat. Now, he led off this game and drew a walk. 
San Dimas, California native, but was stranded at third base. The first one not close. His father, Glenn, former high school and college men's basketball coach, but now is a premier head travel softball coach in the athletics organization. Wave it a miss. So they chase a lot of bats and balls in that family around the summer. Absolutely. Ingram going upstairs on that last pitch. Essek is a switch hitter, so batting lefty here, and there's a bouncing ball into right, base it, it'll score a run, maybe two, no. A throw comes in from Canning on a strike on a bounce. Everybody moves up one base. Messi gets the RBI. It's one nothing. Braves in front. Yeah, that was a well-hit ball. Patient in the plate there. Ingram just happened to hang it in there and pulled it to the right side. Good swing through the zone. You can see the pitch. It's in sight, but quick hands. Rolled it over quickly and was able to get it through on the second base side. I would say with the three hits this inning, none have been hit extremely hard. Nothing hard, but again, just finding the gaps and getting the ball where you need to put it, the right place at the right time. Defender's not able to convert the plays, but uh, obviously there in that case, one comes over. This is Leon from Northridge, California. Big swig and a miss. Yeah, Ingram coming in tight there. Leon's father played football at ASU. Older brother played college baseball. It's an imposing figure in that batter's box. He's a strong kid as Ingram runs it outside and misses. I mean, he's almost daring those pitchers to work on that outside corner. He's trying to take away that inside edge. Deep in the box, open stance. Still only one out this inning in the top of the second. Yeah, Mom's grant some time out there. It stepped out quickly. A little bit of chess going on between the batter and the pitcher. Hit high in the air to center. Trey Lawrence, good defensive outfielder underneath this one. It will produce a run. The throw's going to go to third, and it's not in time. Tagging and scoring is Golong, and the sack fly makes a 2 nothing breaks. Yeah, good barrel, good elevation on the swing, obviously giving an opportunity and time to score the run tagging up. Long fly out. Ingram really laid that ball in there. A lot of lift in that swing, but it still was up in the air a long time. You see Galong tagging, coming home to score. Lappy just fouled one back to the screen. Lappy fly to right. It holds his only at bat. Yeah, Lappy hit here in the third spot for the Braves. Out of El Segundo Middle School. Son of Ted and Catherine. Boy, that one just blistered, but way foul. Quick hands. Fast through the zone there with his swing. Lappy, another one of my 11U Select Fest kids last year, played for the West. Only one of two players in 12U to win the Houston Super Regional three out of the last four years. So, again, he's been part of good teams, winning teams, championship clubs. You know, I think that speaks volumes, and really it's a path that a lot of these young players can take through the PG program. There's so many good teams that are competing at this level now. Uh, You know, every year free agency becomes a real thing for some players, often moving around. Well, that's trouble. Another one that just found the perfect spot into center base hit. Lappy with a single. That'll play Ruiz. And that's the third run of the inning. Soft contact, just landing on the grass perfectly. I mean, the defense was ranged up for a little deeper hit, but whatever it takes to get on. That's four hits, two infield singles, two chopping, rolling singles that have found the outfield. McGraw Van Wormer will now bat. He struck out back in the first. Remember, again, there's two outs, so they need that final one. The comebacker handled calmly in a dive to first. It's not in time. Play was made there to end the inning, but three-run score. What a good beginning 
for the Braves squad. They are in a must-win situation. They play three, jump out early against the Bolts here from South Haven. Good beginning for Braves baseball. They played at three runs on four hits in the second. Wyatt Ruiz going back to work. All he did was put up a perfect first. Always a question, Chris, when you get this deep into an event, how many pitches do these pitchers have left? How many are they able to throw? And how efficient can they be then when they get their chance on the mound? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think that's the key factor right there. I mean, where these numbers are at starting and where they go i mean you can 85 in one day if you got a perfect record but we'll see what happens here and where they are at with ruiz we don't have those numbers but i think we'll get a feel for that with the braves and how they proceed forward but again they're out in front 3-0 ruiz looked good in his first half colton windham from lakeside california first man in a pitcher a first baseman a third baseman an outfitter but a big lefty hitter yeah, he can swing it here. Ruiz is probably going to stay outside on him. Maybe run him in. We'll see. Maybe go upstairs, but I wouldn't hang anything fast. He can drill it. In the 2023 PG World Series, that one is in the air to center. Go along there, and he puts it away. I was beginning to say that Wyndham was both the MVP and the MVP pitcher. That's Otani-like, but he yeah. flies out here to begin the second inning. Two-way guy, good cut, a little bit more elevated on the bat swing going through the zone, put the ball up pretty high. Chase Woodley will bat. Boy, they're loaded up with the lefties. Charlotte, North Carolina, native is Woodley. TJ and Wesley is parents. Over 20 times in his young baseball career, he's been part of the all-tournament team. Represented the Carolinas at All-State last year. Had a father, TJ, that played baseball at William & Mary. So far, so good, though, for Wyatt Ruiz. He's retired all four that he has faced. Yeah, Ruiz is uh, certainly Ruiz is comfortable on the hill right here, definitely demonstrating that he's got good command of the plate. That ball laced to the gap in left center field. A nice job by Halverson, who is shaded in that direction, to get over and cut it off to keep that from being an extra base hit and just a single for Chase Woodley, their first hit. Yeah, good position play there in left field. Solid barrel, though. Excellent knock. Boy, I like that stroke. Yeah, very smooth through the zone. Well hit ball. Derek Maldonado is the DH. Another big, powerful bat in the middle of this lineup. Yeah, Woodley's got good speed, and I think Ruiz knows that, taking a couple of extras over on the first base side. Hands held high there from Maldonado. Pitch comes up and in to bend him back out of the way. Yeah, big hitter here. Ruiz just trying to set him up.
Pause before the pitch. Fouled right back to the screen. Just a little hesitation there in his delivery. We saw that in the first game. I think when you talk about hitting being timing, pitching then is upsetting that timing. Absolutely. One on, one out. Bolts down by three runs early. And that bender just drifted off the corner. Good recognition by Maldonado. He knew that pitch had no chance to be in the zone. Yeah, Ruiz trying to get him to chase the outer half. Comes set right at the belt. Ground ball to short. Can this be two? Well, there's a bobble, and there will be no outs. That's a tough play there on the shortstop side. That should be a routine out, at least the advancing runner, and a reach on air there. Essek wasn't able to handle it. I think that's a case where he was almost kind of going down to a knee rather than just to come through that ball, take it on a hop, and make the quick flip. Yeah, he looked like he, he stumbled a little bit trying to get to the ball. You see him there. He dropped his knee very quickly. That probably... Then you don't have that opportunity to get that short hop or the big hop. The hop's going to catch you yeah. at that point. In that case, it did. Graham Huffstetler is the extra hitter. Tell you what, this man gets in that box. He does not look like he's 12 years old, does he? That's a yeah, he's big a, hitter. He's a big kid, and uh, he can swing it as well if he gets a good pitch. Ruiz came upstairs very high. And, of course, now a little conversation with Gus Rico, the head coach, talking to Ruiz and his guys. And, again, an interesting situation start to unfold here is Colin Thacker talking to his hitters here. A three-run top of the first by Braves baseball, taking advantage of two infield singles, two soft rollers that found the outfield grass. The Bolts, they are the undefeated team. They would love to get back in the score column at some point this inning. And, of course, Braves would just love to put this one away to earn a second if game to play for the true championship then. Yeah, Huffstetler has the opportunity here with men at first and second and one out here. Ruiz probably focused on just trying to keep the ball low in the zone as time's called. Boy, Ruiz is pretty calm out there on the mound. Kind of expressionless as he gets his sign. And the pitch. Good breaking ball. Yeah, Ruiz is a cool customer. He's very, very calm on the hill. Locked into what he needs to do. Wilde at second, Maldonado aboard at first. Fouled right back to the screen again. Yeah, Ruiz gets one back there. Huffstetter takes a cut. Poked a second. Another chance for two. There's the flip and the return throw not in time. Good play on the second base side, though, getting the flip. The R to Messick, but no chance to get Huffstetler. Those big strides got him down the line in time to keep this inning alive. Reese taking a lot of time on Huffstetter, though, before the pitch. I think the pitch clock would have gone maybe twice there. <laughs> it would have been huffing and puffing. Most definitely. Well stated. This is Ryan Canning, the right fielder. Well, SBA here with runners at the corners. I mean, we think watching, whether it's the college game or the major league game, how you can't give good teams four outs. You certainly can't give them five outs. I know it's a situation when you're talking about 9U and 12U kids. That's just part of the process. I mean, you're going to have innings where things don't go your way, and you've got to find a way to limit the damage, a flip to first, not in time, to kind of work around maybe a bobble or a misplay of some sort to uh, keep innings from ballooning. Yeah, I mean, that, absolutely. I mean, you've got to make the fundamental plays. 
I mean, you know, you, you, you get a ball hit to you, you've got to make that play and convert it, and that's where, as you state, you know, you're playing for four outs or five outs, whatever the situation, and that really becomes the differential, I think, sure. in a lot of these bigger games. But it happens with a much more regular basis at this level than it does the older level. So the, in some senses, you're used to doing that. What you can't allow it to do is a run may score because of an extra batter or an error. But in a championship game, you don't want it to be four runs or five runs, obviously. Well, that's a tough one to come back from. There's no question about it. And it happens, but, uh, you know, you, you can't rely on that. You may have done that in a pool play game against a different level team. And you're saying, okay, we're accustomed to maybe coming back, picking three, four, five runs out of it. But that's a tough call when you get to really the final two teams. Two balls and a strike to Ryan Canning. Going to try that maneuver again. Look to third, back to first. Had a couple of box in our first game, the 9U level. Had the attempted move but didn't throw the ball. Short lead for Huffstetler at first. Ruiz's next pitch. Didn't miss my much, but now it's gone to three and one. Yeah, Ruiz there really trying to work the low part of the zone with a fastball. Didn't get the call. Big batter early for the Bolts. Hitters count. Rip to left. Base hit. Bolts are on the board. And it's a 3-1 game. Well hit ball. Jumped on it early, pulled it through, got it through the hole there, and a good swing. They're able to get one over. You can see here a pitch just hanging right in there. It's up a little bit, but a good swing, a good adjustment. This is the shortstop Owen Duncan. A little bit off the outside corner to Duncan. Yeah, Duncan comes in as the nine hitter with Snyder on deck. Wesley Chapel, North Carolina native. Selected to represent North Carolina, South Carolina in the 2022 PG All-State Games. Part of that 23 World Series winning team. Yeah, Duncan looking for an opportunity here. He's got guys in scoring position with two outs. Fouled away. That's a 2-0 hack by Duncan. Couldn't put it in play. A decent hitter here. I'm surprised with Messick in so tight on the shortstop side. I am too. Well placed on the outside corner. Good pitch there by Ruiz. Five hole wide open. And we've already seen Ruiz get several ground balls this inning. And that's what is concerning there when you're, you're playing in so tight here. You've got two outs. Perhaps maybe range up, but you've got to roll off quickly if something gets through the hole fast, which could be the case. He'll roll off here. Pitch down and out, backhanded by Mier behind the plate. And now the count is going full. So now these runners will be able to take off. A base hit should certainly be able to score Huffstetler from second. Extra base hit might even score Canning from first to tie up the game. It's a big pitch for Rees here. We'll see where he goes with it. Runners go. Payoff pitch outside. Ball four. The bases are loaded. Yeah, I think Ruiz was thinking maybe let me go outside, maybe up in the zone, see if he would chase. But he certainly was too far outside, and Rico, Coach Rico, will head out to the bump. He's making a pitching change already. Wants to bring on his center fielder. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point in time, this is a must-win situation. You've got to put a guy on a short leash here. Ruiz still did a fine job. But uh, in this situation now with the bases juice, you got two outs, you got to work hard for one. So both teams have already removed their starting pitcher. And this is Kai Galong, who inherits a bases-loaded 
two-out situation in the second. Yeah, Kai Lefty for the club. Doesn't throw real hard, but he's got good command of the plate. He's got a good blend of pitches, can move the ball around. He can throw the batters off balance, and certainly throwing them from the lefty side, he's got good, some good movement. And again, hopefully he can come in for the Braves and get the one out that they need. As he takes a couple warm-up tosses here. player that inspires him I will say we could ask every kid in this event and we would never get one that would say Willie Mays but that's who Golong picks out one of the greatest center fielders and he aspires to be fast and have as much power as he did of course he started in center but now he's worked his way to the mound so at this age versatility is important so many of these young men regardless of their primary position will probably find themselves pitching at some point in one of these big tournaments. Well, absolutely, and I think that's the uniqueness of a lot of these young athletes because they're able to, to play multiple positions. And as we talked about earlier, the, the, the evolution of the two-way guy is certainly here, and I think it's here to stay. Trevor Snyder, the batter, left on left. North Carolina native is Snyder. Yeah, Snyder hitting here in the 10 spot. They'll hit 10. A run home this inning after the Braves scored three on the top of the frame, and that's a big wave to miss, and that's the type of swing, I think, which you hope to induce when you bring on a left-hander to face a left-handed hitter. Yeah, that was a big swing there, but a great pitch, great location in the lower part of the zone. Nothing into the count. Doesn't want to make this two-strike pitch too good, and he just about rolled that big bender in. A little up in the zone, maybe a subtle adjustment. He'll get the strike called there. Big movement, though. Ground ball up the middle. Nice play. Results in a force barely to end the inning. So Theard had to get there quickly, come up with that baseball, leaving the bases loaded. The Bolts do get a run. Very busy second inning. But as we go to the third, Braves. Braves got three runs in the top of the second. The Bolts got one back in the bottom of the frame but left the bases loaded. Both teams have already taken out their starting pitcher. So Ingram will work here in the third. Mier, Gordon, and Halverson, the heart of the lineup for Braves baseball. Squad out of Southern California. Yeah, they go five, six, seven here. Certainly you got the right guys in the right place here. And the Braves would like to try to add on here in this particular inning just to continue to push this game forward in their favor to get a double final out of it. First pitch fouled right back by the right-handed hitting catcher. Big Dodger fan, big Mookie Betts fan. Who isn't? Especially when you grow up in SoCal. 
Oh, one is that breaking ball that's tagged to right. It'll start to carry, and it's over the head of Canning. It's going to go towards the fence. Mier will coast it to second base. Well hit ball, double. absolutely. Well hit ball to the right side. It looked like Canning thought he had a play on it. Then that ball started to carry, and he really wasn't in position to drop step any further and go back and get it. Yeah, he opened up like he was headed, and he had a good route. But the ball was just kept carrying a little bit deeper. Wyatt Gordon bounced to third his only time in with the bases loaded to end the first inning. To the backstop. Chance for a play at third. That was close but safe. Yeah, good play behind the plate, quick out of the pop. As you said, the backstop, it's so shallow here. It's about 20 feet, and it comes back quickly. No doubt good athleticism for Gordon. His father, Iman, played college football at Stanford, followed by eight years in the NFL, and mom ran college track. There's some speed for you. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. Any of those. Jeans that he inherits. Mom, Roxanne, McCray, Gordon. Big swing, fouled right back. Lead off double and a wild pitch. Let's put Mateo in the air over at third base. That's a chopper up the middle that'll get the run home. Play made by shortstop on a gliding effort. Well, they bring the run across. They put four up here. And Duncan makes that play, but it's now a 4-1 game. Yeah, routine play there. Played the hop well. Halverson had an infield single leading off the second, rolled one back up the middle, and he would score the first of three runs that inning. Northridge, California native. Right to Duncan. Easy play, quick flip, two outs. Good play to set that up perfectly. He was down low. Gathered himself, really good transfer on the ball and a simple play across the first base. This is Galong. We start him in center, and then all of a sudden he moved to the mound. He's now batting for the second time, so he's been involved in a lot of situations already in this game. He walked and scored just an inning ago when the Braves scored three. Now their lead is three. And again, just showing that versatility and athleticism as these young players play in multiple positions and really something that speaks volumes to the level of talent that's out there today. Feels like Ingram with that size and that frame, he's really bringing some juice. He dropped down with a breaking ball there, and that's three plays for Duncan just gliding over the base. Leadoff double produces a run, three straight ground ball outs. And just like that, we go to the bottom of the third inning. Braves, though, a 3-1 lead. It's a 4-1 game here in South Haven.
Well, the Bolts, they are the undefeated team coming into this championship game. However, they're trailing 4-1. to one. If they lose, we will have a, another contest to follow. Galong back to the mound. He came on to get the final out to leave the bases loaded in the second. Back to the top of the lineup. Bryant, Pedinato, and Lawrence, the three hitters. Yeah, the Braves off to a good start here. I had a chance to talk to Coach Rico about it. He said chemistry has really been the key, and this team has done very well throughout the 2023 season. Boy, how about that slow curve? Boy, that thing, was, that thing was <laughs> vicious right there. Getting back to my conversation with Coach Rico, they're 55-7 and seven overall in PG this season. So the Braves trying to get themselves an opportunity to turn this into a double final. SB on the other side, they'd like to close it out. No doubt. Brent Maddox from Kingwood, Texas. That's a town outside of Houston that produced Mason Wynn of the Cardinals. Trey Richardson out of TCU was drafted this year, I think, by the Cardinals as well. So a lot of baseball talent there in Kingwood. A little shorter commute for him than it is the kids from Carolina or California. Absolutely. Almost sounded like a cracked bat, but it's going to dump out to left and will not be caught. And it's going to end up resulting in two bases as Bryant will cruise in there. Halverson just wasn't able to make the play. Yeah, Bryant's got good speed, and that's unfortunate. Looked like that was an automatic out on the left side. And once he went into that dive, that ball snuck just enough behind him to allow Bryant to keep on running. Yeah, this is a big opportunity for SBA here, especially with the speed they have in Bryant over on second. And the catcher, Petinato, struck out back in the first. Ruiz coming inside there with the fastball. No shortage of size on this Bolts roster. One big kid after another climbing into that box. Might have something to do with the water in North Carolina. They say that about the <laughs> West Coast. I just think kids are getting bigger today regardless. Households are getting tons of food, I'm sure. Kids are eating well, that's for sure. That's way inside. It's going to go to the backstop. It'll provide a free base as Bryant trots over to third. Ruiz's last two pitches working inside. Blister to center, and this ball is going to carry right on over the head of our center fielder to the fence. Bryant's going to score. Petnato will hold it second base. Back-to-back -back doubles by SBA. Yeah, that ball looked playable in center. Just not off the, the barrel quick enough on the route. It looked as though a line shot you could see here. Keep in mind it was Galong who started in center, so we've already made a change when he came out there on the mound. Yeah, that ball was hit deep, but it looked like maybe right off the barrel, just a little bit of a delayed start on the route. And Trey Lawrence was trying to hit one about 400 feet. He just loaded up, was trying to hold back on that pitch. Yeah, Lawrence can... Definitely put a beating on the ball here if he gets the right pitch. If Ruiz hangs a fastball, he's in trouble. That was Gordon who shifted over to center from right where he started. Again, looks like we're going to have a pinch runner as well. For the Bolts, Mason McKay is going to run at second for Petnato, the catcher. Still nobody out in the bottom of the third inning. Oh, 
Popped up right side over near our tent, and that ball is going to be out of play. Good cut. And by the way, Ruiz, who started on the mound, he's gone to right after Gordon, who was in right, went to center, and then Galang came on to pitch. Two strikes on the dangerous Trey Lawrence. Back to our breaking ball. His strike three called. He doesn't like it, but that's a big first out in the inning. Yeah, that was a good pitch. Mums called it right away. He didn't hesitate. Oh, that's a real good pitch. Yeah, that ball had some good movement. It fell off the table quickly. Colton Windham for this left-on-left -left matchup. A little bit of life in the Bolts dugout. They've scored a run this inning to cut the deficit in half. Still work to do. They'd love to finish off this championship in one game. Brace trying to make it a couple of games this afternoon as the temperatures pick up here in the Memphis area. That throw ended up in center. I'm not sure what you accomplished by that maneuver back to second. What you've given up, though, is a free base and the risk-reward allocation. Well, absolutely, in scoring position now, another opportunity for SBA. I mean, this is a really tough. I know he takes that big step, but you've got to make a perfect throw. The shortstop's got to contend with the runner, and then it ends up in center. Well, you could see they kind of got aligned with each other and jammed a little bit on the throw down, and that's a difficult play to make as it rolls through to center field, and now I hit by pitch. Mm. Ruiz looking a little bit loose. He went outside his first two pitches, and then he tries to come inside and tags the runner there with Galong. Apologies there. So now there's runners on the corners. And Chase Woodley will bat. He started out the second inning, got a single, was able to reach on a bobbled play at second that he should have been forced on. Then he scored. Will he get a Charlotte? He'd love to play for North Carolina. Be a Tar Hill as he takes a strike. He's had seven walks in this tournament, so he already understands on base percentage. Leads his team and runs batted in. Well, he's got runners on the quarters here. Yeah, good opportunity as Kalong shakes off the call there. Didn't like what he saw here. He's okay with this pitch. We'll see what he throws. He goes over to first. See what Woodley can do. This young man's a tremendous student. By the way, he's a 4.0 student, magna cum laude, and uh, he's an Algebra 1 this year as a 7th grader. I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know it was possible <laughs> either. Impressive. Right now the numbers he's concerned with are the runners on the bases. Looked like a pretty good pitch yeah, looked, from Galang. A little, little bit up. Yeah, he's got some horsepower upstairs for sure. He'd like to try to convert that into his bat and get a knock here. Four to our score. Bolts trailing, trying to change that in the bottom of the third of a six-inning game. Right off the top of the dome, off the helmet. That's back-to-back -back hit batters, and the bases are loaded. Yeah, Kalong looking, though, faltering some here. And that's a tough situation. Base is loaded now. Right off the helmet. That might be a Rico heads out. Well, I thought Ruiz looked good early, and then they made the change to Galong, and now I'm curious if they might be considering a third pitcher. We're only in the bottom of the third inning, and keep in mind, again, always the possibility of another six innings after this game. Well, it's a must-win situation for the Braves, so 
I guess he's going to leave him in. That might be questionable. That could pay off. But with the bases loaded and the situation he's in right now, we'll see if he can grind his way out of it. Big Derek Maldonado reached on a fielder's choice in an air just an inning ago. Bases full of bolts. High hand position from Maldonado gets ready to swing, and that one's not close, but the short backstop actually helps out the Braves here, and it doesn't allow a run to score. That was an interesting pitch. I mean, after taking a moment, just settling back in, and, you know, he dried his hand off. He got a little bit of Roz in there, and, th you know, that ball was five feet away from the – anywhere near the plate. Yeah, it wasn't close. So what do you do with the next pitch? Hit a mile in the air to right. This ball starts to carry. Ruiz back there, and he can't make the play. It's going to drop. The runners had to hold, anticipating a catch. They all move up one base, and it's a 4-3 game. Oh, well, that was a high flyer to the right side. Looked as though he had a good route on the ball, and he was under it, but it just dropped in behind him. How's this for a run-scoring single here? A long one at that. <laughs> Still only one out when Lawrence struck out looking. Huffstetler also reached out a fielder's choice back in the second. Beat out a possible double play bouncer. Maldonado gets the single. That ball traveled about 260-some feet and dropped beyond the reach of Ruiz. It's not a windy day. I think sometimes, though, these outfielders have been fooled a little bit by just the carrier, the strength of some of these hitters to elevate or to barrel up some balls. Yeah, absolutely. I think where I'm concerned with right now is when you look at, at Coach Rico and his squad, he, he really doesn't have anything happening as far as anybody playing catch, as far as pitchers go. I mean, they could be out of arms. Huffstetler takes a little bit in. I'm surprised they did pull Ruiz. He was okay. So actually it does look like there was somebody down over on the grass area that was throwing, so they could be making a change here. Yeah, there's no bullpens here, so you have to kind of leave the playing field, go in foul territory outside the chain link fence, play catch to warm up without a mound. And that can be challenging, but nonetheless they get the arms loose. And I have a feeling this might be, depending on this situation, could be a pitching change coming forth. Good pitch there on the outer half, chasing. This becomes a really big batter in this game. Golong would love to get some type of out, preferably a strikeout. This team's still ahead, but now it's down to 4-3. to A couple of hit batters, a long fly ball that dropped for a single. And a 2-2 count. Golong comes set. Here's the pitch. Fouled back to the top of the screen. <laughs> it was played by Huffstetler on the carom and just picked it up with his bare hands and flipped it back to Galan. Big pitch, big batter. Bounce it to the right side. They'll take the sure out. The tying run will score. Huffstetler gets an RBI. It's a 4-4 game. was the right play by Thiard just to take that out. Yeah, there was no option at home plate, obviously. And now we're in a 4-4 tie. So SBA coming alive here. Ryan Canning had a run-scoring single last inning. Barreled up a ball to the outfield. Back door, breaking ball, and a dandy for strike one. Good-looking good pitch there. Canning hits in the eight spot. Yeah. 
hard hit right to short. Should end the inning and will. Messick with the play. So the Bolts battle back. They score three runs. How about this? We go to the fourth in a game tied at four for the 12U PGA Invitational National Championship. When we go to the fourth inning, game tied at four, Brett Dillon and Chris Allard. It feels like we've seen a few of these teams back on the rope, so to speak, maybe taking some punches, but here we are, tied as we go to the fourth inning. Well, SBA definitely, they turned the corner here in their last half on the offensive side, and now the Braves are going to have to work for it, being tied up here in the fourth. We saw Wyatt Ruiz starting on the mound. Then he moved out to right, batting for the second time. Headed infield, base hit back in the second. Scored a run. Waves and misses against Ingram. He's done a pretty good job since he came on. Now, he gave up the double to lead off last inning on a ball that we thought off the bat might be caught. Then he went ground out, ground out, ground out, all to short to Duncan. Yeah, and working ahead here. They had a ball and two strikes. Ingram settling in. He looks good. I will say with that size and that frame, it feels like he cuts down that distance to home plate once he lets one go. Absolutely. He came in tight there. Looks like a hit by pitch. Might have clipped the elbow of Ruiz. Just what the Braves needed to try and get back in business, maybe regain the lead. Evan Thompson has to hop out of the way. Snap throw down to first close, but safe. Yeah, good move out of the box there quickly and a good throw back. Good attempt over on the first base side. Ingram kind of drops down a little bit on that breaking pitch, doesn't he? It's, it's almost a, a slinging type action. Yeah, his arm slot, you can see it drop out. It's not every pitch, but in that case, it certainly was much more visible. Just watching him between innings showing off his breaking pitch, and you, you watch to see the curve, the slider come out, and he really did the same thing then, kind of slings it. A little faster arm swing, of course, on the fastball, and he misses to Thompson. And that's not a big thing now, but I would say as you get older, the hitters can pick that difference up quickly. Well, yeah, because, I mean, obviously you're dropping your arm slot to the point where you can pick it up before the ball is released. Carried outside, so a hit batter and a walk. First two base runners reach to begin the fourth inning, and it also turns this lineup over. So that was a good beginning and foundation of this inning for the Braves. Well, most definitely, and you've got Messick coming up. Top of the order, this kid can get it going for the club. They're in a position where they can score. They need to take advantage of it. Ingram looks good, but again, you know, you're, you're going to put a couple of guys on here and there, but you just hope you can minimize that. 
Nesik has been on base twice already. He's walked, he's singled in a run, so to the plate for the third time or in the fourth inning. Doing what good leadoff hitters are supposed to do, get on base. Pitches down for a ball. Yeah, fastball Ingram. He tried to run it just right up the middle. It was low in the zone. Maybe a little subtle adjustment there. As Messick laid off. A lot of run in. I think Ingram wanted that pitch, didn't get it. Yeah, he's looking for the inside part of the plate, just a little bit too far in. Hit batter and a walk. To begin this fourth inning, that's a well-placed pitch. He was able to recalibrate and find the strike zone. Subtle adjustments. It's impressive, these kids at this age, pitching again and even hitting, being able to make those adjustments and really raising the level of their skill set. I mean, it's nothing if not a game of adjustments, and sometimes we think game to game. Sometimes it's pitch to pitch. Absolutely. And I think what you're finding and you're starting to see in some of the, the – pitchers that are maturing within the game you're seeing their ability to kind of scrub that if they make a bad pitch they can adjust quickly absolutely two two pitches downstairs knocked down by Pettinato to keep it in front of him but now the count has gone full to Vincent Messick the leadoff hitter big pitch for Ingram here it comes sliced foul right by our camera position that almost took somebody out Yes, yeah, is a big pitch here again for Ingram. <laughs> Everybody's okay, I think, on the lift. No problems there. How about that pitch? Strike three and a dandy to Messick for the first out. Yeah, he came in tight there. That was a great pitch, locating. You can see that he's a little fired up. He's not a big emotional guy on the hill, but you can see some energy coming out of there. Look at that. It's right too up. good to take. Yeah, too good of a pitch. You're going to get called strike out on that one every time. This is Leon. The ball gets away, and now both runners will move up. One out, pass ball. You didn't want to see that happen. Runners at second and third now, an opportunity. Yeah, it takes away the force at any base, it takes away a possibility of a double play on the carpet. Good cut a little late on the fastball. That ball could have carried. And a good swing. Leon walked in the first, had a sacrifice fly to center field back in the second. So he's driven in a run. Two more men in scoring position for him in a 4-4 game. Started a swing, laid off, and maybe happy that pitch missed. Yeah, Ingram came in tight there. Probably put a little bit up in the zone. Off the hands. But a flare to left. It's going to drop for a base hit. The Braves are back in front, 5-4. That's where strength at this age comes into play. Yeah, I'm surprised that Duncan, you know, looked as though he rolled off well from the shortstop side as if he had a play. It seemed like that ball was sort of hanging in the air. It wasn't hit real deep, but uh, a good effort nonetheless. But yeah, just wherever, kept carrying. Yeah, wherever it drops in, I mean, take advantage of it. A big cut there at home plate. Healthy rip and a miss by Lewis Lappy, who singled in a run back in the second, one for two. So the Braves back in front by a run, 5-4, four, fourth inning. Braves need to win to force an if game to follow for the championship. They've got a good man in the box here in Lappy. He can get a knock here hitting in the three spot. On the ground, that's a fair ball. Nice play at third. The throw is going to be in time. What an effort by Woodley. Yeah, that's a great defensive play there. To his right, dropped the glove down, got the leather on it, came up quick, and an excellent throw across. Now a run does score, but my goodness, that had a chance to be so much more. Absolutely, but a great play there over on the third base side. Chase Woodley. So now a 6-4 game. Leon did move to second, so he's in scoring position for McGraw Van Wormer, who's 0 for 2. Cleanup hitter. Right over the top of that one with a swing and a miss. Good fastball.
nothing and two. Woodley's got another play. He's handled them both in back-to-back sequences. That one just a little easier, but the Braves get a couple of runs on just one single. The hit batter and the walk to start the inning both come across, and the Bolts have some work to do again, trailing 6-4 as we go to the bottom of the fourth in South Haven, Mississippi. Bolts come to bat in the bottom of the fourth. Trailing Braves baseball 6-4. to four. Owen Duncan, the shortstop, is going to lead off. Yeah, the Bolts go 7, a correction, they go 9, 10, and 1 back to the top of the order here. So an opportunity on the offensive side. Duncan is the last hitter in this lineup that has not faced Galong at least once. Little chopper, comebacker, handled easily, underhand flip. Galan was thinking overhand, underhand, better underhand it. You saw that, didn't you? It just <laughs> took a second. I'm thinking to myself, he's going to go which way? He goes underhand the safe way. It's hard to throw overhand on the run. That's a dangerous maneuver. We saw that earlier in that first game. We saw some situations there that were opportunities, and if you don't convert those plays... Certainly can be problematic. Trevor Schneider hits one foul outside of the base. Metrolina Christian Academy, seventh grade for Schneider, and that one is going to be put away at second base by Theard. And there's two outs. Yeah, soft contact there. And a routine play on the second base side. I talked to Coach Rico about this on the Brave side. He says, fundamentals, we work those things through. That's what gets us where we get opportunities to do well. Hit well by Bryant. This ball starting to carry, but run down in center field by Gordon. How about a 1-2-3 inning? Great inning, a long fly out. Well hit ball, good barrel, good contact, but an excellent play on the center field side. On we go to the sixth. Deep fly out, harmless frame, 6-4, our score, Braves in front.
Four eventful innings in the books. It's a 6-4 game as we go to the fifth inning. We've got a little bit of everything we've seen so far. Good pitching, good defensive plays, and some good hitting as well. And the Braves obviously in a position here to push it to a second. I know that's their goal, SBA on the other side. They'd like to wrap this thing up. Yeah, there's no doubt. As it gets warmer and hotter, more humid, muggier, if you had the possibility of playing one to win a championship, you'll take it. Mateo Mier doubled and scored in the third inning, takes a strike from Ingram. Yeah, Ingram with that fastball locating well there. Mier's lays off. Last inning for the Braves, they had a hit batter to lead things off, then a walk. Just one single follow, but it produced the two runs. Right now, the difference in this game. Chopper foul outside the bag of third for Mateo. From Luther Burbank Middle School, 8th grade. It's part of the 12U USA Baseball National Team last year. Big Dodger fan, big Mookie Betts fan, wave it a miss. He'll go down on strikes to begin the fifth inning. So Ingram gets the K. Yeah, Ingram came upstairs there. That was a good-looking pitch and sequence of pitches he threw. As you can see here, he comes up a little bit. Ran that fastball right through. There's Wyatt Gordon, a couple of ground outs so far in his ledger. Bounced to third, bounced to short. But the San Diego native. Hard hit to third. Boy, that took every reach by Woodley to make the play, and he hung with it. He's made now three plays in the last couple of innings, and none have really been routine. Yeah, that, that was a great play, a good stab at it, as you could see as he reaches up. I mean, he had to go as high as his hand would take him. And he was in the right position to make the play. Good throw across. Throw was true. This is Halverson. That's a roller to Duncan. He's got it. And that's back-to-back -back perfect frame. So the Braves do not add to the lead. They go down in order, and we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Bolts have some work to do. Trailing 6-4 to four in the 12U Invitational National Championship. When we go to the bottom of the fifth, Braves went quickly and in order in the top of the inning. So the Bolts once again find themselves in a position needing a couple of runs to tie. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to coach, head coach Colin Thacker of the SBA Bolts. And as we discussed early on, you know, obviously their goal was to try to do this in one. And now they're perhaps in position where this could go to a double final as they get on the offensive side. This is Pettinato, who doubled and scored back in the third. 
Yeah, Pedinato hitting in the two spot here. He can swing it, and he's got good speed if he gets on board. So heart of the lineup. Galong came on and got the final out in the second and has been in there since. Left-hander's been around the zone a lot. In fact, he has retired now five straight hitters. Yeah, he's settled in. He seems to be on his game. And I'm sure Coach Rico will keep him there and go all the way, although he loses his man there to start it off. Brings up the dangerous Trey Lawrence, but he's 0 for 2. He got rung up on a big curveball back in that three-run third inning. Yeah, Lawrence, I mean, he's, he can swing it as well. Trey Lawrence talked about his accomplishments. He did say in his questionnaire, you know, just being a minority baseball player comes with some challenges that aren't always pleasant, but he's done his best to overcome that by keeping a positive mindset, expressing his feelings, and then surrounding himself with people who support him. He's got a bright baseball future ahead. Takes one down and in. Pretty good job there by Mier just to kind of glide to his left and keep that ball in front of him. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to be careful here. Kalong takes a long look over to first. On the ground, in the left, base hit. So a walk and a single, and... Pedinato is going to go all the way to third, and with that bobble and left, Lawrence continues to second. Yeah, that was a well-hit ball getting through and some heads-up base running. And now scoring opportunity. Lawrence just read this bobble. I think he was going to be content to stop at first. You can see Pedinato go to third, so when this little misplay, then he just raced to second base, and there was no throw. Absolutely opened up the door quickly. But, again, that's alert. That's good baseball IQ demonstrated right there. Tying runs just like that are in scoring position. And now the bases are loaded. Wyndham hit by a pitch for the second straight plate appearance. Yeah, that's the last thing that Galang wanted right there, just getting away from him. Well, we've seen Chase Woodley at third base monitor and handle the hot position with very little difficulty. Now he bats for the third time. He's been hit by a pitch. He's singled and scored, and the bases are loaded, and there's nobody out. Yeah, Woodley in the five spot. You know, certainly a big opportunity here for SBA. A little bit of movement going on in the dugout with the Braves as Coach Rico heads out to the mound. He's keeping that towel close by, and that's for one thing, just to kind of wipe some of the perspiration off his face whenever he needs a little uh, pick-me-up, and right now he is going to make a pitching change. Yeah, so Galong will have a seat, but he did a good job. Galong hung in there. Looks like it's Evan Thompson. He has been the extra hitter in the lineup, and now he will come on to throw. Yeah, Thompson, right-handed thrower for the club. Got pretty good command of the plate. He throws a breaking ball. Good little fastball. And this kid's got some range. He can deal. We'll see how he does here. It's definitely getting hotter. There's no question about it as we head towards the 3 p.m. hour here in South Haven, Mississippi. Weather's been great all week. We've had excellent weather. We had really no significant rain of any No sort. lightning? No lightning. That's well, good. we did have lightning all one right. day, That's and our <laughs> lightning break was only about Probably 35 right, minutes I like or so. That. It wasn't bad at all. Unlike Florida, Myrtle Beach, any of these locations, yeah. Panama City, some of these locations. Lightning should, capitals of the world. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, of course, the safety measures that are necessary. Uh, we've seen some long delays. Thompson finishing up his warm-up tosses, throws a fastball curve and a changeup. Young man from Gilbert, Arizona. Also plays for the Scottsdale Dirtbags in addition to Braves baseball. Would love to play at Stanford or Arizona State. And I would say he inherits a bit of a mess, though. Bases loaded, nobody out. Bolts down by two, trying to find a way to come back and win. And it was the home team that was trailing for the entirety of our first game before they scored two runs with two outs in the sixth to walk it off and win the championship. And, you know, are we replicating here? We shall see. But uh, 
tough situation to come in off the bench, but again, we'll see how he operates and what they can do here. Chase Woodley, the batter. He's inspired by Drew Jones, last year's number two pick. Son of Andrew Jones, right now. First one from Thompson. Rides a little bit up and out. Thompson lost his hat. He's one of these kids that uh, they like the, the long locks here, and uh, if the hat doesn't fit right, it comes off every pitch. Soft flare. This is trouble. Base it. It's going to drop in. Lawrence has great speed. He will score. This game is tied at six apiece. Well, a good piece of hitting there. Just squaring up. It was a shallow hit. But you've got excellent speed on the bases and the two runners scoring there. That ball just dropped in. Right inside left center gap area. So the tide is turning here. Still nobody out. That's the concern. Four straight have reached. Maldonado singled in a run his last A-B. Good front door pitch, but apparently it missed. A little bit low. I think we talked about this earlier. It's pitching. You know, how, how deep can you go? You've got to get here. I know the Braves worked hard to get to this point. They came through the consolation bracket, and you've got to get your horses out there to get the wins, and sometimes you just run out of arms. That would be the toughest thing these coaches have to do. Yeah. Agree. Certainly when you have a loss early that forces you to get creative. Neither team has a terribly deep roster where you're trying to get a number of kids some action. You can lean on your regulars, the focus of your roster. But again, where you'd like to have a few more individuals would be in the back end pitching-wise when you play this many games in a week. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. And I think at this level what you're finding is that more players at this young age, they want to play everywhere. They want to get a chance to play in the field. They want to play in the interior. They, they want to swing it. They want to do a little bit of everything. <laughs> It's hard to find straight POs at 12 years old and 11 years old. Although there are those players that exist out there, and many of them are already playing with different organizations. <laughs> Boy, what a hack. Boy, that was a I good pitch, too. Him. Upstairs, a big swing. But I think you'll probably see that. You know, in the, in the older groups, you see that. You know, you're going to see guys that are going to be more specialty oriented players. They're going to be POs. They don't mind coming in and doing their job where they need to. And I think if you can carry more players like that deeper into these bigger tournaments, obviously the outcomes can be more favorable. But it's tough with pitching. Three and two the count to Maldonado. Two runs have come across already this inning. Remember, these are six-inning games, so this kind of has more of an eighth-inning feel to it than it does your normal fifth inning. Windham at second, Woodley at first. That ball is absolutely blistered to right. Up, out, and gone. Maldonado hit that about 310 feet. A ringing three-run shot, and for the first time today, the Bolts have taken the lead. Well, that was a massive swing there and the pitch was just hanging right on the plate uh, there, Maldonado crushed it as you said 300 to the fence that thing was about three uh, three in big change for certain a well hit ball as he cleared the bases and that's the first monster hit we've seen so far and you talk about timing the SBA couldn't ask for a better opportunity there in a blink of an eye five runs of score and there's nobody out this inning. It's kind of ironic because you see the pitch here hanging right there. That was not the replay. My apologies there. Thought we were getting a replay on it again. Ball's just loud coming off the bat of Maldonado. You could hear it. Thompson's been greeted by the two-run single and the three-run homer. He'd like to start accumulating some outs, and that's a real good pitch painted on the outside corner. I would say when you come in here with... 
the Braves, you start to see just one gigantic hitter after another. Your thought is, I can't leave a pitch over the heart of the plate. I've got to paint. I've got to work at the knees. I've got to work the corners. We've seen a number of hit batters. You know, you're trying not to let these guys get extended. Sometimes in doing so, you have to be a little bit fine. And then runners get on base. And when runners get on base and then you get the extension in the big swing, big innings happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. As you said, you come in, you falter, and you, you know, you're just trying to now locate. Really being very specific, as you're stating here, is that it's not always the case because you're under kind of a high leverage situation. This one is hanging up a long time, and it's going to drop, but not just drop. Huffstetler is going to coast to second base with the high bloop short double. Well, SBA here is apparently starting to open things up. and That's a well-hit ball. It just dropped in. It stopped. It looked like a nine iron on sure a par did. three or something, you know, on soft, soft green somewhere. Putt for birdie. That's six straight though I've reached. And this is Ryan Canning trying to keep it going. He's one for two with an RBI single. That's a swing. Tried to hold back, but a swinging strike one. He needs to tie that shoe. He just about twisted that off. Braves had had the lead the entire game until this inning. Well, now it's 9-6, and now the concern has to be keeping this from getting any further away from them because they only have three outs left with which to work. That's right. And I think this is a, t this is a pressure cooker here at this point in time, especially for the pitcher. I mean, coming in, you want to throw strikes, but you want to try to keep things under control instead of it really allowing itself to break open as it has thus far particularly in the fact that there's no outs. Bolts came into this inning having seen five of their hitters in a row set down. It's been walk single, HBP, two-run single, three-run homer, bloop double. Yeah, I mean, I think Galang did a fine job. I mean, coming in for Ruiz and carrying the, the torch as far as he could. And now you're just in a situation here where it's a tough call. These guys have definitely jumped on it. Thompson going to that rosin bag, trying to keep that hand dry as best he can. Looking for that first out, and there it is. Strike three call. Good pitch to Ryan Canning. Yeah, good pitch on the outside part of the plate. Gets the strike called on the outer half. That's a great pitch. Canny just froze there and took a look. Boy, he comes at the right time. Owen Duncan, the shortstop, next man in. 0 for 1 with the walk. Getting towards the bottom of the lineup in the bottom of the fifth. But now the bolt's up by three. Front door breaking ball for a strike. Yeah, Duncan hitting in the nine spot for SBA. Nine, six bolts in front. On the ground, softly hit, but this is going to take a Perfect play. Messick was looking to third. I don't think he believed he was going to have time to plant and throw back across his body to first. But Duncan hit it in the right spot. And now there's runners on the corner. Yeah, you can see here the ball hit to him. A little bit of a decision there. He kind of grabbed it, gathered. He had the ball in his hand and just hesitated. Third baseman was not there on the bag. He was off a ways. And then just no throw, as you mentioned, back over to the first base side. Sort of a no man's land. Trevor Snyder now batting. If Snyder reaches, then you turn this lineup over. The only guy who's not hit this inning is Maddox Bryant. He's on deck. So they could indeed hit 10 at least this inning, barring some type of double play here. Go. 
in the air to left. Halverson camped underneath it. Here comes the throw home, close, but not in time, and they have scored another run. That is a six-run inning. Yeah, SBA is really starting to run away with this now and, and putting more insurance on the books for them is the Braves just trying to work themselves out of this inning and get onto the offensive side only with one out. A correction, two outs. But this is Maddox Bryant, the 10th man to hit. He's one for three with a double in the game. Remember, this was a 6-4 Braves lead coming into the sitting. Absolutely, and it didn't look as though it was going to open up like this, but again, with the change made, the bats are coming to life. Uh -oh. Driven down the line and right into the corner. That ball's off the base of the fence. A long swing from Bryant all the way from first. Duncan will score the seventh run of the inning. Yeah, he got all of that. And a well-hit ball down to the first base side. That was deep. A good cut through the zone. An excellent swing. Lifted that ball perfectly to the right side. And as you stated, right off the fence. We might have another pitching change. Just trying to get that third out here in this fifth inning well at this level at this point in the game you never know what can happen it's the nature of the game things can switch there's possibilities it just depends on the pitching and that's going to do it so coach Rico will bring another pitcher in looks like number eight will come in for the Braves Colton Pettinato correction not Pettinato that would be Joseph Salinas there on the go. pitch. There you go. From Los Angeles. In fact, he says he lives five minutes from Dodgers Stadium. So maybe we should all go join the Salinas family and go to a game at Dodgers Stadium. There sometime you go. Later on. Maybe when uh, they pick up another player, perhaps, in the Orange <laughs> County man, Shohei Otani. You never know. So Salinas, JoJo, right-handed pitcher, shortstop, second baseman, third baseman. Would love to go to Wake Forest or Duke. Right now he'd also love to get the final out in this fifth inning. Well, Seven runs have come across. Yeah, this has been a very productive inning for SBA. They're getting on the bats early, and they're definitely on a roll here. What looked to be, and this was very comparable to the first game that we did earlier. The fifth inning seemed to be the inning that opened things up. You know, you had the... It's like third time through, and it's where good hitters, when given three opportunities, more often than not, are going to do some damage. Yeah, absolutely. And they start to, you know, get a feel for the pitching, really starting to see the ball very well. And in this case, SBA is capitalizing on all of that. Colton Pettinato began this inning way back when, when he walked to begin the fifth. Good breaking ball for strike one. Yeah, Salinas coming in here. Hopefully he can just take care of business and get the outs he needs. Tell you what, he's spinning a couple of them in there for strikes. Back to back. Good pitch here. Joseph Salinas comes right back at it a third time. <laughs> he wanted strike three. He was looking for it. He ran the outside part of the plate. Just a little bit low and out. Joseph says his favorite teacher is dad because he's taught me everything I know about baseball. There you go. Dad's probably got that heartbeat going just a little bit faster. I know that drill. That pitch is outside. It's all fun and games until the kid gets out there on the mound, and then the heartbeat gets going. Yeah, absolutely. I know that feeling. <laughs> I've got a pitcher as well. Pet not awaiting. Next one is... On the ground is short. Messick had to go right through the wickets 
Bryant will come home to score. And Petnato cruises to second base. And they put up their 12th here. Essek might have been almost too quick trying to get that ground ball and make a play. It looked like he got himself in position, but again, it just went through his glove and just pulled his glove up a bit. Trey Lawrence had a single earlier this inning, so he has a chance for a two-hit inning. All of a sudden, you almost start to think about a run rule possibility before you even get to the sixth. That's possible. Eight runs home this inning. From two down to six up for the undefeated Bolts. It's eight after four. Next pitch to Lawrence. A little bit outside, missed from Salinas. And he is the fourth pitcher that the Braves have used. It was Ruiz, Galong, Thompson, and now Salinas. I just have a feeling they're just out of pitching. They're trying to do what they can to move guys around, position players. They can pitch a little bit. Different look, different feel, maybe throw the batters off a little. Different approaches on the mound, just try and keep them from getting a look at any one pitcher too long because this is a formidable offense for the Bolts. Absolutely. Big blast this inning, a three-run opposite field, line drive home run by Derek Maldonado. And you see Lawrence, he fills out a lot of that box as well. Yeah, he's a good-sized kid. He can get a piece of this as well. Big swing and fouled right back to the screen. You know, you get this far ahead in this one inning, uh, you know, you really start to relax. The team gets really loose and things start happening consistently. You know, it seems that, that when you start having this, this far of a spread, it's uh, in a lot of cases you play a little bit better. Fouled over near the dugout. Lawrence stays alive. How many can the Bolts score this inning? Salinas trying to end it, give his team one more chance in the top of the sixth. It's a big deficit to get even. It takes six at this point in time if they can close it out here. Hard hit right to third. And the play is made by Leon, and the speedy Lawrence is retired. They did it. Now they got to get to the offense. Eight run score. The Bolts up by six. Last chance for the Braves when you come back here from South Haven, Mississippi. Things changed in a hurry for the Braves team. Now they come to bat in the sixth inning. Their two-run lead is gone. They're down by six. 
And it'll be Galong, Ruiz, and Thompson, the scheduled hitters against Ingram. And give Ingram credit. He came on to get the final out in the second. He's been in there since. Yeah, Ingram's done a fine job taking over, which he's done. And the offensive machine just got going in full gear in the fifth. Braves got three in the second. They got a run in the third. They got two runs in the fourth. Ingram hit the first batter, walked the next batter. Both of those scored on just one single that followed. But I think the philosophy has to be just give our bats, our guys, enough time to do some damage. And uh, that's exactly what transpired. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, they got things going. A well-hit ball, though, to the left side. Well, this one's going to carry back near the fence. It's going to drop in, and it's going to be extra bases. That's a double from Galong to begin the sixth inning. Yeah, good hit going opposite for Galong, hitting in the eighth spot. That ball was deep to the left side. See a good swing there. A long way to the fence. Jonah the yard is the going to bat, although he is 13. The four. This is Nicholas Nava. We'll make sure we get the right guy. So Nicholas Nava is going to bat. Going to bounce one to second base. He's going to be the first out in the sixth inning. We just didn't get that communication coming upstairs here. We're good to go, though. Nava wearing there number we go. four. Comes in as a sub. And this is Evan Thompson. He's been an extra hitter. He's pitched. Scored a couple of runs. Single on a walk. Right now, the Braves down to their final two outs. Ingram trying to shorten this game. And that one fouled back to the left out of play. Yeah, Ingram's really done his job well. Efficient here on the hill. Minimizing any sort of situation and handling the duty he needs to. That ball is absolutely tattooed. Deep center, and that is a goner. That was Thompson. deep. <laughs> that may have been 320 feet. It almost took out our camera on the hill in left center. This kid's batting 10th. He's saying, hey, move me up in the lineup a little bit. Yeah, there you go. You probably just earned a couple of spots up the ladder. And Ingram just so happened to hang that particular pitch of all pitches, and you have to remind yourself, that's a 12-year-old just destroying this baseball. Yeah, that was a great swing with good elevation. I bet the exit below was pretty good there as well, going deep, almost hitting the camera. I mean, it's beyond it. So it's a 12-8 game. Now, with Messick batting, they've turned this lineup over, so a couple of base runners would make things interesting. Well, that's what they have to shoot for right now. You want to get men on as Ingram will work ahead. I mean, this is a key situation. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Strike and, call. Yeah, Ingram back-to-back -back fastball gets the low part of the zone. Messick just laying off. He's got to pull the trigger. You don't want to sit around and take a look with Ingram being able to locate as he's done so. Messick is singled in two at-bats with a walk. He's going to wave and miss. And now the Braves are down to their final out in the sixth inning. Well, I know it's been a great tournament, and certainly behind the scenes, the folks from Perfect Game, Tony Harper, his crew, everybody, take a moment just to thank them and all their work that they've done, everybody, the operations group. 
Leon will pop this one up. The catch is made. And the Bolts, with an eight-run fifth inning, storm back to take the 12 UPG Invitational National Championship. Well, what a tournament. And what a week, as I started to say that it's just been exceptional. And again, you can't do it without all the people behind the scenes, the operation crew, and and really as well what's very important to acknowledge is the parents. The parents put so much out there to get their kids traveling around the country, to give them the opportunities, and really to see the best in the business compete out here. And uh, what a tournament it's been, and it's just been an absolute pleasure to be part of it. Two great teams. Now they get the big championship belt presentation, which I know these young kids love. Well, absolutely, and that's the belt that you wonder where it's going to go when you get to the airport when TSA sees you walk through and you've got a giant belt. They said, hey, what are you, a big-time wrestler, or what's up with that? No, that's a great point. Yeah, no, it's been a great one and uh, really another outstanding tournament put on by PG. Well, Chris, both of our games, the uh, undefeated team was down for about half the contest but stormed back late to get the win. Well, absolutely. And, again, uh, it, just, it just speaks the volumes and the level of talent, the calibration of these players, what they can do, and, and really their ability to go out there and perform. At the end of the day, sportsmanship prevails. These young players really demonstrated what they're all about. And uh, you can't say enough about how great these players are, and certainly the event's a perfect game puts on around the country. Congratulations to the SBA Bolts 12U. They are the 12U PG Invitational National Champions with a 12-8 win today over Braves Baseball. So for Chris Allard and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolden, thanking you for tuning in. Once again, the Bolts are the champions, and thanks for joining us right here on PerfectGame.tv.